There was a time when hydrogen was presented as the future of fuels for our cars. The vehicles promised things like longer driving distances, faster refueling, and eco-friendly energy. Hydrogen fuel cells were supposed to save the auto industry from climate change, and it promised no harmful emissions from the tailpipes, just pure water. So the big question now is, what happened? Why hasn't the hydrogen car taken over the automobile industry in the years since? What is the future of this technology? Stay tuned to find out. The Hydrogen Fuel Cell Electric Vehicle, or FCEV, which simply runs on pressurized hydrogen from a fueling station, produces zero carbon emissions from its exhaust. It can be filled as quickly as a fossil fuel equivalent and offers a similar driving range period, or driving distance, to petrol. On the surface, hydrogen combustion engines seemed like the ultimate solution for future cars. You still get a wonderful four-stroke piston cylinder combustion engine with the sound and feel that's pretty amazing, but all there without carbon emission. Since hydrogen fuel H2 doesn't have carbon in it like gasoline or diesel fuel, there's no carbon added to the byproducts of combustion in a hydrogen engine. The hydrogen car technology had pretty dope features that were quite impressive to consumers. George Denver Bush liked the idea of the hydrogen fuel cell so much that he offered $1.3 billion in funding to get these cars on the road. In 1965, we had cars like the Porsche 911, the Lamborghini Mirror, and the Horse Eye GTL. But what never made it into the spotlight that year was the world's first hydrogen fuel cell car. Hydrogen vehicles have been around for quite some time now, but have just gained popularity recently as the future for passenger vehicles and civilian transportation. Hydrogen fuel cells run off of pressurized hydrogen and have a refill time equivalent to gas fuel vehicles and brag about zero emission with literally just pure water coming out of its exhaust pipe. That sounds pretty fantastic, right? Especially when compared to electric vehicles, which usually take up to an hour to charge at a station. The idea of hydrogen vehicles seemed great in theory, but then what happened? Nobody seems to talk about these cars anymore. Why did the hydrogen vehicle lose its traction after all the hype that was surrounding it? Well, there are a few reasons why hydrogen cars lost traction and publicity, and it all boils down to five factors. Price, convenience, performance, the environments, and competition. Buying a car is one of the biggest investments one can make after owning a house, and the biggest determining factor when it comes to buying a vehicle is inevitably the price. There are three hydrogen fuel cell vehicles currently in the market right now. The Toyota Mirai, the Hyundai Nexo, and the Hyundai Creta. The 2021 Toyota Mirai is the cheapest of the bunch, starting at $50,000. But with the right incentives and financing, you can own one for just $18,000. The price of this car seems to be a really good deal, but how much does it cost to refuel? The average price for hydrogen fuel is about $16.50 per kilogram. Hydrogen is measured by weight, which is much different from how gasoline is measured, which is by volume. Each hydrogen fuel cell vehicle holds about 5 to 6 kilograms of hydrogen, traveling up to 400 miles on one filling. So even though 6 kilograms of hydrogen can make the car move up to 400 miles, the cost of a tank is over $80, which is pricey considering the more cost-effective alternatives like hybrids. There are only 45 hydrogen refueling stations in the United States. And while customers are afraid of hydrogen because of the price tag, companies are also skeptical for the same reason. The cost of constructing just one refueling station can amount to around $2 million, which is way higher than building the average gas station or EV charging station. To make matters worse, most hydrogen gas stations have just one pump. With such a small customer base, it's hard for companies to invest large amounts of cash towards hydrogen stations with no promise of return on investment. However, there is some silver lining for hydrogen car owners, and this comes through a little ray of sunshine called manufacturer fuel incentives. Companies like Toyota understand that hydrogen, for the time being, is pretty expensive and hope to lure in customers by offering buyers $15,000 credit towards fuel costs. This fuel credit is a nice benefit to anyone buying a hydrogen car, but the catch is you need to spend that $15,000 on fuel within the first three years of owning the car. And once that time is out, customers have to pay the high hydrogen prices, 
with a very limited selection of refueling stations. California government subsidies are also another glimmer of hope for hydrogen car owners. These subsidies offer millions of dollars towards the construction of hydrogen refueling stations and seek to have over 100 stations in place by 2025. There are still significantly less than the tens of thousands of gas stations and EV charging stations scattered across the U.S., so only time would tell if hydrogen stations would become a prevalent form of refueling. However, for now, with the average fuel tank of $80 and the exorbitant construction costs for refueling stations, things are not looking very promising for hydrogen cars. Because of the plant expense and costly fuel, no private investors are willing to fund these furling stations as there would be no return interest unless hydrogen and their vehicles become cheaper. Germany, Japan, and South Korea all have excellent hydrogen networks and have demonstrated that hydrogen is not viable as a transportation alternative. Another reason for the hydrogen vehicle failure was because it was very energy inefficient. The reason why hydrogen is inefficient is that the energy must move from wire to gas to wire to power a car. This is sometimes called the energy vector transition. Let's take, for example, 100 watts of energy produced by a renewable source such as a wind turbine. To power an FCEV, that energy has to be converted into hydrogen, possibly by passing it through water, the electrolysis process. This is around 75% energy efficient, so around one quarter of the energy is already lost. Hydrogen starts with the energy needed to generate it. Then this energy has to be compressed liquefied, trucked, gasified, recompressed, and then the car has to convert it back to electricity. With all these steps, you lose half the initial energy you started with. The hydrogen produced has to be compressed, chilled, and transported to the hydrogen station. This process is around 90% efficient. Once inside the vehicle, the hydrogen needs to be converted into electricity, which is 60% efficient. Finally, the electricity used in the motor to move the vehicle is around 95% efficient. Put together, only 38% of the original electricity, 38 watts out of 100, are used. With electric vehicles, the energy runs on wires from the source to the car. The same 100 watts of power from the same turbine loses 5% of efficiency in this journey through the grid. Furthermore, you lose 10% of energy from charging and discharging the lithium ion battery plus another 5% from using the electricity to make the vehicle move. In other words, the hydrogen fuel cell requires double the amount of energy to function effectively. To quote BMW, the overall efficiency in the power to vehicle drive energy chain is therefore only half the level of an electric vehicle. Expensive catalysts were another reason for the failure of hydrogen cars. In an old petrol car, the catalyst is often worth more than the vehicle. However, an FCEV requires 10 times the amount of raw metals that are valued by the kilogram, not like most materials, typically higher than the value of gold. They require expensive tanks made of the strongest material with the lowest hydrogen permeability known to man. These tanks require regular safety inspections as high-pressure containers are often very susceptible to explosions, and these could be devastating. Because of the total amount of energy that can be stored, 6 kilograms for a car, the range is limited, typically shorter than an equivalent BEV, and despite many people commenting that hydrogen is light, so far the vehicles are heavier than their battery-powered equivalents and don't have the space for anything really useful, like four-wheel drive. A four-wheel drive BEV is lighter and has more range than a two-wheel drive FCEV. Fuel cells are large, expensive, and slow to react, so they tend to be limited in size. Batteries are needed to start and support the fuel cell and don't work below 50 degrees Celsius. And one cannot easily generate hydrogen in the braking regeneration as it would equally be inefficient. As it is, hydrogen offers few benefits today except perhaps a cleaner exhaust and minimal pollution. However, they still emit a lot of CO2 through hydrogen production, either by electrolysis or more directly by making hydrogen from fossil fuels mainly because of its inefficiency. What this means is that we won't be seeing any climate change benefits until hydrogen is produced from renewables, and because of its inefficiency, they need more capacity to be built. The only benefit over batteries is the fast refill time, which is sometimes not achieved if too many people visit the refilling station at the same time. 
as the stations have to be repressurized. Batteries, on the other hand, offer more benefits over combustion fuel in price and recharging. For efficiency comparison, an FC EV gets 35% on a good day, and a BEV gets 90%. You need three times more primary power generated electricity to drive an FC EV than a BEV. There have been several attempts at overcoming the physics problem of hydrogens, such as storing them in hydrates, or gray goo, aluminum sponge, or ammonia. However, these things only make the costs higher and the process more inefficient. Hydrogen is just the fossil fuel industry's way of trying to hold on to some sort of centralized energy distribution control. Electricity and batteries are far more accessible and do not need any new infrastructure other than charging sockets. What do you guys think? Would hydrogen cars make a successful comeback soon? Or is the concept of it flawed? Let us know what you think by leaving a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.